So you've got President Biden, who's juggling uh, a uh, pandemic. He is juggling this knife fight, needing the votes for infrastructure, his jobs bill, and then some. Uh, Eugene, where does the Middle East now take its place on his uh, list of priorities? Yeah, I mean, this has been a White House that has been squarely focused on the things that they want to be focused on, right? The prioritization is at the top list, is at, their, is at the top of their list when it comes to skill sets. They're very good at it. And the things that they want to be focused on are the pandemic and getting the economy roaring and bouncing back. And that has been their focus. But what they've continued to find, and they knew this was going to happen, that things happen in the world and they have the focus on. They wanted to focus, when it comes to foreign policy, they wanted to focus on China. They wanted to focus focus on Russia and that relationship. And so this is something that they, you know, it, it, it's it's hard to deal with. Obviously, no president has really been able to figure out the best way to do so. But what's really different with this White House and this president is that you have a party. This is the first time that the president's party has been a lot more sympathetic to Palestine, right? You look at what people on the left, some of the people with the biggest voices in the Democratic Party, you know, they are dealing a lot more in the gray area when it comes to this issue. And they're not scared to call out Israel in what they think are, um, you know, escalations that are unnecessary. And so that is another friction point for this president who wants to focus really on the domestic issues that are happening in this country. But something that, you know, when I've talked to people behind the scenes, they talk so much about how the foreign policy and the domestic policy are so interlinked, and they're starting to see that even more and more. And so how they deal with this issue um, in, the, in the Middle East, where is that on their priority list? It's moving up, but by no you know, determination of their own. Janine, uh, back to your first answer. Uh, did you leave room for the possibility that our uh, Mideast envoy, Jared, uh, may have gotten some things wrong during his time there? And are you, you leaving open the possibility for this theory that uh, uh, Netanyahu, and you hear this on Israeli media from some of their commentators, quote, needed a crisis? Well, there's no doubt that Prime Minister Netanyahu benefits in some way politically from this and that he is mostly concerned with his political survival. But I don't believe that this is necessarily a war that he desired at this moment. It helps him in the sense that um, we're probably going to have to head to another election now rather than his rival being able to form a coalition government. We don't need to get into the weeds on that. Um, in terms of, of, of Jared Kushner, it was a lot easier to deal with the Gulf and form what were known as the Abraham Accords than it was to negotiate a serious peace deal between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And what's very unfortunate is that since the last Gaza war of 2014, there's been stasis. Nothing's happened, right? And so in the absence now, Hamas has rebuilt those tunnels. It has resupplied itself with rockets that are much are penetrating deeper into Israel. And the Israelis, you know, have not figured out a new plan for dealing with this. Now, what the previous speaker, my fellow panelists said about the U.S. and, and um, President Biden is correct. He doesn't want to engage with this. Um, and he has this problem now of the Democratic Party being split ideologically over Israel. But he's going to get dragged into this one way or the other if this drags on as long as the 2014 conflict did, which was seven weeks, 2,200 Palestinians dead and 65 Israelis killed. So, Hadi Amr is a, is a, is a good um, diplomat in the region, but the U.S., I imagine, is going to be taking a greater role soon. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.